Good afternoon, ladies. Hello and welcome to our live stream lunch. I'm very excited about presenting today's topic and I really welcome all of you here. Uh, now, obviously we're in a Facebook group. We're in our um, my group, The Focused Female Entrepreneur. So welcome to all of you Focused Female Entrepreneurs. And what we are going to be talking about today is the secrets to using Facebook groups to effectively build your online presence and create your own community. So uh, I have had a lot of interest in this topic because uh, particularly in our group, we're all online entrepreneurs in some form, whether that is our main uh, way that we get business or our main source of business uh, is not always the case, but for now, the way things are nowadays, we all need to have an online presence, don't we? And obviously, if you're watching me here, <laughs> then you know that social media is really the key to, uh, well, I think the key to having a really great business and the cornerstone to your online presence, particularly if you have a business that involves people. And most of us do because you can't, uh, you can't have a business without people in some form. And social media is just that, it's social and it's a way of connecting with people directly uh, in a different way to the uh, more formal, I suppose, uh, having your website and doing things that more traditional, old-fashioned way, old-fashioned internet way, if there is one. So. As I said, I've had a lot of questions about Facebook groups, about how to effectively use Facebook groups, how to use your own Facebook group to uh, grow your business and how to create and then uh, grow your own Facebook group as well. So that's why I thought I would pop on and make this the topic of today's lunchtime, a live stream lunch. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm Pauline Delaney and I am... I run this group, The Focused Female Entrepreneur, and I am a, a business and success coach for online female entrepreneurs. So that's why, uh, obviously, I've come on to talk about this. So I'm not one for waffling, although I, I, my family may uh, disagree with that. I do tend to talk a little bit sometimes and get a bit carried away, but I'm going to be very strict with the way that I'm uh, presenting the information because you're here for information, you're here to get knowledge, you're here to get some great tips on how to create and grow your own your business and create your own group so that it's going to really benefit the way that you run your business. So let's get started straight away. So Facebook. Facebook obviously is a very, very big thing online. And I really feel that if you are not on Facebook as a businesswoman, then you are missing out on a lot of potential business, on a lot of uh, organic advertising, on a lot of potential connections, on, uh, on a lot of revenue, I suppose, really. And it's a really great place to be able to build relationships with people in a more informal environment. You can also uh, use it uh, commercially, obviously, by using Facebook advertising, which is more of a paid way of getting uh, people to uh, find out about your business and for you to grow your business that way. So there are different, on Facebook, we have different uh, entities, I suppose. So if you are here, if you're on Facebook, you obviously have your own personal profile, so your own page, which is your personal page, where you can start uh, building a network of people who are possibly just your friends or family, uh, and you can connect with them socially. Although a lot of people will also combine their Facebook page with a business, the business aspect as well. And that's what I tend to do as well. It's really, it's really hard to separate the two, I find. It's very hard to be completely uh, business oriented and also completely personally oriented and keep those completely separate. Hi Leanne, <laughs> great. Uh, and if you do have to pop off, that's fine. So having a business page 
is the the next step up from having your personal page you have to have a personal page to be on Facebook but if you run a business then it's a great idea to have a Facebook page as well a business page and that is where you can gather people who are interested in your business to uh, connect with you more and you can put up information there about your business you can start building a relationship with people they can start getting to know you uh, more about what you do and your business and that allows you to have a place I suppose a business uh, location on social media in Facebook and for some people they don't even have a website they do all of their business just through their Facebook page and so what you will need obviously is a Facebook page but you can't have a Facebook business page without having a personal page so you do have to have it connected and they don't necessarily need to be you don't need to publicize that you have uh, a business page if you don't want that to happen so yes you're right Leanne yes it's a great place to start if you don't have a website because it's easy you can get it up in a matter of minutes it doesn't cost you anything and then you can start promoting it organically and if necessary when the time comes then you can put, create your website because that obviously is a much much bigger uh, endeavor and a lot of people will think that they really can't start a business online or they can't run a business online without a website so they put all of their energies into that which is really not the right thing to do particularly if they are new in business and they haven't actually yet really defined either what their business is who their ideal client is and the messaging that they want to put out so that if the creating the website is the first thing that they do then once they really def refine all of those other aspects they're gonna to have to go back and change it anyway so I would definitely not recommend that uh, having a website is number one on your list when you're creating a business or starting a business so you've got your Facebook page your profile page and then you have your business page and as I said that's a great way to start getting fans so it gives you that uh, that place to gather people to you and to let them know more about your business and you can showcase your expertise on there you can have events on there you can really start to put out some great information and get people interested in you and what you do then there is a step up or a different step which is a Facebook group so having a Facebook group is completely different because that's sorry I'm just gonna get this out of the way uh, because that's where you are going to start growing a community so Facebook groups are places on Facebook obviously where there is a common theme or the people are gathered in a in that place in that group for a certain reason so uh, they may have common interests they may have a common business goal they may I mean you don't have to have a business group it can be a personal group because there are the different level or the different classifications of groups as well so you can have uh, you could have a private group you could have a public group you can have a secret group if you want to create a group that nobody else is going to see and it's just for you uh, very interesting there yeah thanks Leanne for that so what you can uh, this is allowing these people to gather together in a community so as I said having a Facebook group is going to have be able to allow you or to gather or to join a plate uh, to find a place where your ideal clients hang out where people you would like to uh, mingle with I suppose hang out and they're all there for a common reason and that's that's going to then start to build up a community uh, of people who are in of like mind and of like they have, they have the same intention I suppose going in there so you also have the option option with uh, groups of having files and tabs for events so you if you run an event on Facebook for example then you can have uh, a ready-made audience that you've got there to invite because you've got the tab there for, for the events so if you want to obviously starting your own Facebook group is quite a jump if you particularly if you're someone who is new to Facebook what you can do first is to use the groups that are already out there and use those to start to grow your presence 
on Facebook so that people can start to get to know you. You can feel your way out. You can find places where your ideal clients are going to hang out and you can therefore <clears throat> start to build relationships there. So I am very, very big on defining who your ideal client is. And I'm sure that if you've been in the group for a while, you will know that. And I think that that is one of the really one of the top things that needs to happen when you are running a business because you need to there's so much noise out there online particularly on Facebook people are everywhere there are there are po anyone can post you know anyone can put anything out there and there's so many different people who are putting stuff out there and they may have something uh, to offer obviously but you have to get the attention of your of the person who's scrolling through their news news feed and you have to be able to make them stop because you have put something there that makes them stop and realize that that's something they really want or something they're interested in and in order to do that you have to appeal to them specifically because there's a lot of general stuff out there and if you're putting out the same old posts over and over again if it's, um, I mean, for example, and I don't want to offend anyone when I say this, you know, find your purpose. That's something that I, I see a lot. You know, if you want to find your purpose, if you're struggling with this, this and this, then come to me. And that's just such a general, general statement. And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with it or anything wrong with someone who uh, has that as their business. But... If you, for example, if you said, uh, if you are a mum who has, if you're a new mum, you're ready to get started back at work, but you don't want to go, you don't know what's, you know, you've lost your identity as a woman and you're now trying to reinvent yourself and you are struggling with postnatal depression and you have another couple of kids at home, let uh, me help you find your purpose moving forward. That's much more specific than just saying, I can help you find your purpose. So that's just a, an example, but that's going to be the key as well to defining, by defining who your ideal client is, that means you know when you find them and you know what to say to them so that they can find you and they can really identify with you. So once you've done that, then you want to find groups, Facebook groups, where your ideal clients are going to help hang out. And you're going to then join up with those groups and feel them out and every group that contains your ideal client is not necessarily a group that either you are going to feel comfortable in that you're going to like the vibe of that the people in there are going to be open to what you have to offer that you're going to be able to connect with the people in there I think it's really really important for people to go in and not go in and start selling and that's something I would never ever recommend and some people do that they think that uh, you know they're in a group of entrepreneurs who are growing a business and they're a business coach so they jump in and they start selling straight away and that just doesn't work at all it's really important firstly if we even if we take a couple of steps back if you're at the stage where you're first you've defined your ideal client and you're now looking for somewhere to uh, liaise with them online to choose a Facebook group. If we even take that step back to there, where do you find these Facebook groups? Well, the key is knowing your ideal client, as I said, and then, then choosing uh, some keywords that you can pop into the search bar at the top of the groups. Uh, when you go into Facebook and type in groups you can and they will suggest Facebook will suggest some groups so for example uh, entrepreneurs you could type in female entrepreneur if you were looking for someone who if you're a mum mums in business if you're looking for someone if you're a weight loss coach for example a mums losing weight things like that you can pop up in the, the search bar at the top and that is going to give Facebook will then suggest some different uh, groups for you and you can go in and have a look at whether that is the type of group you would like to join and you can you can join up and you can feel it out and it's really important as well not to just go crazy and join 20 or 100 groups like uh, I see some people having done because you just can't you can't build meaningful relationships when you are trying to do something in each of those groups 
I would recommend that you choose maybe up to three groups, three main groups that you plan to spend your time in. Because you can go into a group, I mean, if some, I know some people will go and they'll find out where are the groups that are going to allow me to promote. Oh, this one's on a Monday, this one's on a Tuesday, this one's on a Thursday. I'm going to go in there, I'm going to promote on those days, and that's it. I'm going to you know, be one of these fly-by-nights who, who we never see again on the, other day, on the other days. And you're not building any type of relationship there by doing that. No matter how good your offer is, people are going to be very sceptical of someone who just is only seen on offer day. And they are also going to need more from you in order to build up that trust. So if you're putting out an offer for a, a free session, for example, and it sounds really great, you're also in company with a lot of other people who are doing the same thing, even though they may be targeting different people. But you're going to have to build up a relationship first. If you want, if you want you're going to suddenly spend an hour with someone, an hour is a, you know, say they're offering a one hour session for free. An hour for you is, is still a, a great investment of your time so that you're not going to just grab that because it's free, because it's not free in terms of your time and because that is one of your most precious resources, you are going to want to be sure that that hour that you're spending with someone is going to be uh, targeted to you and worthwhile to you, that you trust the person, that you know that they have the expertise that they are promising, and you need to make the decision as to whether that's going to be valuable enough for you to exchange your time for uh, that session. And that is something I think people really fail to recognize nowadays. They're offering things left, right and center without having built up the relationships. And, you know, given that, not, not a track record so much, but just shown that they do know where they're, what they're talking about. They, they have expertise in a certain area. They have experience. They're not just jumping in and promising things that they can't deliver. And you start to build up a relationship with them just by seeing what they're posting even. So you want to join some cool groups that are containing your ideal client. As I said, three are probably is probably a good amount to choose at the most. And I find for myself, obviously I've got my own group and there's maybe maybe two other groups that I really spend time in that I find I get traction in and that the vibe is really nice and it's really what I want. It's not really uh, too stuck up and businessy. It's ladies because ladies is my audience. It's, um, it's got a great supportive at atmosphere because a lot of people in some of the groups will be snippy and will be catty and they'll you know if somebody posts up something they've got to criticize it and that's not that's definitely not happening in our group and I'm not going to tolerate that in our group but there are other groups which I will not name where that is the culture there and it's just not a pleasant place to be so it can take you a little while to work out what whether a group is right for you and that's fine for you to feel your way out in those groups uh, but don't try and spread yourself too thin. So choose the ones that are really going to work well for you and the reasons that you are actually joining them for, which may be just uh, to socialize or for most of us is probably looking to grow our businesses in some form, whether it's to get clients, whether it's to get joint venture partners, JV partners. Uh, but be clear on your intention when you're going in because Facebook can take a lot of time and energy to uh, really create great success with. So what do you do when you join a group? Hey there, oh, sorry, let me just get this off. Oh, where are we? Oh, where are we? Let's turn it off. Sorry about this. There we go. Sorry about that. Okay. All right, take two, sorry. So what do we do in a group? Well, when you join a group, as I said, 
You're not going to jump in and sell. You're going to sit back and you're going to just get, a, get an idea on what the group culture is like. And you're going to start to connect with people. I like to always introduce myself and often the host of the group will ask you to do that. Um, so really do that because it, it really will promote a great feeling of welcome. It'll give you an idea on uh, what you think about the group because you're going to get that support straight away. It's going to allow you to therefore showcase your expertise so people will start to get to know you and you're able to not sell but you're able to therefore let people know what you do straight away and they can that that then keeps you open to people who may be interested in you as a potential client or as a potential uh, mentor or as some sort of a, a connect uh, an alternative alter complementary business that's the word that I'm looking for so you can start to connect with people just having a look at what Leanne's writing here excellent that's right Leanne and it, that's the great thing about a group too is you can start to build up relationships by it's it's almost like talking and that's the key this is social media we're talking about we're not talking about going into a business meeting or a corporate environment it's social media so when you go into a group you want to be social so first you go in and you start to mingle and so just imagine if we equate it with uh, with real life <laughs> with offline events say you go into a a social environment and you've got people there that you don't know that you've never met now you're not going to go up to them and go oh hi I'm Pauline here's my card I'm a business coach I'd love to work with you because that's that's really jumping in too soon and they're just going to be backing away and going oh she's a bit forward she's a bit pushy I'm not going near her instead what you do is you ask questions you uh, connect you know and if they're if they're talking about something you might make a comment or you might ask some questions or you might uh, tell them your experience but you're not going to jump in and start selling to them straight away the key and the great thing to do in any situation is to have them ask you some so them say oh what do you do and that is much more powerful than you offering and you saying oh I do this I do this I do this because it's very can be very uh, aggressive or it can be off-putting it's going to be much more powerful if someone if you're not telling them and they just ask because that's really showing that uh, they're interested in you and they want to find out more about you rather than you just jumping in whether they want to know who you are or not so mingle and connect and then start feeling out what's happening so you know if people are commenting on something that you are an expert in you start commenting as well rather than uh, and you know you're not jumping in and saying oh you know hi me I can do that I can do that just give them some tips so if, you, if someone's talking about time management for example in some of the groups I will comment about some great ideas of doing some time blocking or to you know do a 15 minute power burst so that you get things done or how to work around your kids so that you're having uh, time to yourself without having to constantly have them nagging you things like that I'm not saying I'm an expert in this so listen to me I'm just offering them some tips and the more that you do that in different settings or different places on social media the more people are going to start to get to know you once you start being really consistent with your messaging as well that's going to help them understand who you are and how you can help them and whether you are a good fit to work together so if you're busy saying oh I'm a I'm a business coach um, and sort of sharing your expertise about that and then the next day you're saying oh and I'm a um, I'm a visibility coach so I'm gonna help you really stand out online and I do branding and I do uh, oh I do styling as well that's right so if you need any of those things then come to me because that's just going to confuse them they're not going to know who you what your real expertise is and they're not going to therefore have it fixed in their mind about 
oh that's right Pauline she's the business and success coach for online female entrepreneurs instead they'll go oh she does something I think she does branding I think she does visibility and she does a couple other things I'm not sure whereas if something came up where somebody was looking for a certain coach in an area that you've heard someone is a really specific uh, expertise then you're going to know oh that's right Pauline she does that I know that she does that okay let me have a quick look here oh Devika hi Devika do we join local groups now when you're saying local groups you mean local Facebook groups because that would probably depend on your business uh, I think that if you are in if you have a business that you're going to be taking offline so if you are running if you sort of work out of a certain area for example then yes local groups may be good for you again it depends on what your intention is and what you're looking for so if you have a an offline business that needs people to actually physically come to you then yes local groups would be a great idea but if you're looking for a more uh, global audience then uh, that may be you have to work out what the best use of your resources is are, sorry and of course your resources being time and energy particularly so that if you are if you're going to have 10 different groups and you know ones in one state ones here ones here ones here and you're really not running an offline business then I would say don't do that but if you have that offline presence that needs people to physically come to you then a, a local group would be a good idea okay so when you go into a group you've mingled you're getting social you're starting to connect with people then start to give out as much free content as you can and don't expect anything back and this is one of the real keys to being successful with your Facebook uh, marketing most people will go in and they'll be asking you know they might put out a post and then they'll put a call to action all the time but if you can put out a lot of free stuff that's really good that people are sort of blown away by then that's when they start to think wow if this is so good I'm getting so much value from this she's not even charging me for this imagine if I actually worked with her and I paid her how much more value would I be getting then imagine what her paid stuff is like imagine what she's like as a coach imagine what her program could do for me so by putting all of that free stuff out there that free content then you are going to really be seen as a, a generous person as someone who's not trying to get money out of you uh, but is really expert um, and you're really going to build up your credibility that much faster <clears throat> excuse me with people and of course you do want to be salesy at some stage I mean not so so much salesy but you have to sell I mean if you're in business there has to be some sort of money exchange for you to for you to actually have a successful business so there's no point in being noble and saying no 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 I'm not going to ask them to pay I'm not going to ask them to join my uh, my program I'm not going to offer them anything that I, they have to pay for because you're not going to make any money <laughs> so eventually yes you do need to have some sort of a call to action so I would recommend having 75 percent of your time in Facebook groups to be social and 25% can be sales I suppose and when I say 25% is sales I don't mean okay I'm in this group here so I'm going to okay one two three I've done four posts that are non salesy now I can do a post and then I'll do another four you know it's really overall and getting that general idea in the different groups so you could be you could be sales you could put a call to action in a group every day as long as it's not the same group uh, that you're doing a post every day that's salesy and you don't want to when I say sales or call to action I'm not meaning that you're necessarily saying buy my stuff buy my stuff buy my stuff this is how much it is it may be something like here's my great new ebook that I've just written put your name and email ad address in and you can have it for free or it may be have a call with me like I said before let's book a, a an assessment call or a discovery call or it may be a free template or it may be here's my latest article 
read my latest article and you might not even have them opt in but that just is then uh, expanding their their um, experience of you and being able to to get more of your expertise and just to to get to know you more and that's what you want because you're in a social environment you've got lots of other people there as well and you want people to get to know you and what you what you're like to ex like video video is just such a powerful tool because if you for example you're listening to me so you're hearing my voice you're seeing me <laughs> so you're getting to see what I really look like you're getting a much more rich experience of me as a person by hearing what I'm saying by seeing me by looking at me interacting with you by hearing the the uh, the tips and the knowledge that I'm giving you rather than me just putting a post out that says maybe the same thing but it's just a very different experience so that's something else that you can really use when you're in Facebook groups if you're allowed is to share uh, yourself in video uh, now I know this is going to scare a lot of you and most of you will be going no nah, I'm not I'm never doing that but it is just so powerful and Facebook loves video so they are going to be very very kind to you if you do uh, do a video and it then allows you to share that video to other areas uh, so that you've got this powerful uh, marketing tool I suppose that's also allowing people to get to know you so much quicker so what else have I got on here okay now obviously posting is something that you're going to do in groups so what sort of posts are going to do well what you want is uh, there we go yeah great Leanne thanks for that so what you want to do is have you don't want to go in there and go oh I'm in a new group I'm gonna to have to post every day I'll have to post three times a day no you don't have to do that the key is to be in there regularly to be consistently so not in there three days in a row and then have a break of a week and then a day here and then four days here being consistent is the key and it will depend on the group itself as to how uh, how you find them and how receptive they are and how supportive they are as to how often you're in there so for some groups I try to post in my uh, in my own group I post definitely every day but in other groups I'll post most days and sometimes I might do a small post but other times I will do a more robust post that is designed to really uh, be a, a quality post I suppose now when you're doing that you want to get engagement and you want to get interaction so you want people to be interested in what you're posting and you want to engage them because that's the key if that you can get the conversation started that's when you can start really connecting with people rather than you posting over and over and again and just hearing nothing from it so your post needs to be able to grab their attention and it needs to be enough to prompt them to take action because for every person who is out there who is sorry for every post you put out say you get two two comments on it or two likes there's probably 20 or more people who've actually seen it and thought wow that was good but they just haven't commented so don't ever think that you're not being noticed because you will be and it's just uh, and gra the thing is once a few people have commented that motivates the rest of them to think oh maybe I'll comment as well you know it's that bit of that who's going to be first to um, put their hand up for something and one you know once sometimes one ugh, if I'm falling over my words once one person's got their hand up then it's like oh yeah I'll do that too what do you think is the balance I respond a lot rather than posting okay well, that's good too yes yes I like that Leanne uh, I think that I think it's good to have a plan so I always have a, a, a plan for my week I schedule out when I'm going to be in the different groups and what I'm going to post I actually what I did recently was this is a little tip I went through all of my old newsletters for the past more well, six months and I took them out and put them in a word document and then I took bits out of them that were really good and a lot of them were really good I think and then I put them all aside 
on a document and then I had those to draw on to be able to post in different groups so I would do maybe one key post in a certain group every couple of days and I would write down where I would posted that in case I decided I wanted to use it again so I'd write down the group that I posted it in and I would also write down the date that I posted it in uh, and I found that that worked really well because I'd already created these newsletters at the time so it's not like I had to sit down and go wow now I have to buy I have to write another oh, another 10 posts I already had them there and I could still intersperse them with some spontaneous posts too so that worked really really well yeah Leanne it does now you'll be interested in my next um, webinar that's coming up which is about content creating content which I'll talk about at the end so Getting back to uh, the posts that you do, if you want to get, like I said, you want to, oh, I'm sorry Leanne, you were asking about commenting and I think that is really important as well, to be seen, to be, not so much to be seen, but to be commenting on things that, that pique your interest or that are in your field of expertise, uh, I think that's very powerful and I think that you don't want to be just going on there and posting, 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 you also do have to connect with people by uh, responding and by you know showing I suppose the the respect that you've got for them putting something up there and helping support them by commenting on it so if you want to have a post that's really really exciting and juicy then what you want to do is use use a story so you can use your own story you can use testimonials you can use you know oh my client my uh, client I had the other day did this and that's very powerful because it's showing social proof people are going wow that client of hers sounds great they sound just like me I can identify with that you can ask questions you can ask cool questions you know not these little I mean it depends what you want sometimes you can ask a single question that can be a quite thought-provoking and other times you can ask some don't ask a yes or no question because I've seen people do that and you know unless you wanted you're running a poll and you really want an answer to this or this then what's the point of that there's no point in having a hundred comments if they're all just yes or no because you, <laughs> you're not getting that engagement there you're just getting people to comment I suppose it does encourage them to to click which is good rather than just reading it but if you really want to get some interaction ask really thought-provoking questions be controversial you can be very bold if you want and say this is what I think what do you think <laughs> if it's I mean if I don't know if we've got any um, anyone from the US on here today but you know Donald Trump is a very big <laughs> provoker so if you said anything about him <laughs> then you would get a lot of interaction but you may not want that sort of interaction so I'm not recommending that so don't take that one down um, unique details unique details are really 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 powerful so if you are able to put out a post that's talking about something that you specifically have done for example uh, for me I know that something I have uh, in my backstory is that on the 30th of June 2013 I went to an internet marketing seminar and completely changed uh, it completely changed the way that I uh, I was uh, not living my life but my idea about my future and it turned me into an entrepreneur from that moment on so that is a unique detail that's a date that's a something that happened and nobody else could say that so it's not like I'm saying oh, I lost five kilos even say for example that one you can still use your weight loss if that's um, what you want to convey to your audience but you can say I am a, a busy mum of four four children and I lost five kilos in in six weeks by not ha uh, without having to give up my favorite foods and uh, by only exercising five minutes a day and I wish that would happen but that's not the case but you can see how that those unique details make that much more enticing than me saying I lost five kilos come follow me do you want to know how but if you can be intriguing as well then that's going to do really well with your posting um, so show your expertise but 
also show your vulnerability and that is really really going to work well but when you're showing your vulnerability you don't want to be desperate so if you're saying oh when I started coaching I didn't have any clients and I've still got no clients I'm so desperate I wish I'm, I'd love to have you know I'd love to have five clients that's what I'm looking for and at the minute I haven't even got any and I can't wait until I've got more clients then that's not really going to provoke uh, people to want to come and work with you because they're going to go oh if that's how she is I don't think she's much of an expert but if you in then if you instead say, say you know three months ago I was desperate for clients I couldn't find anyone no one would sign up with me but then uh, I created this fabulous new uh, system that allowed me to book clients like clockwork and my coaching practice is now full to the brim of one-on-one -on -one coaching clients and they are all my premium ideal clients do you think that that's going to have much more impact I think it will and that's the key so you're showing them that your ideal clients that you uh, understand their pain you know where they're coming from but there is a way out and you've achieved it so therefore because they're still in the pain come follow me and I'll show you the way to get out of that pain now I missed your question Devika sorry I think it was how long uh, a post is so I, I find that there is a combination of times that you can do for posts uh, times for length sometimes a little short post can be really really effective if it is very concise and powerful other times you if you've got an interesting compelling story you can make it longer and people will read it now it depends on your ideal client as well if they are someone who likes more detail excuse me a sec then make the story longer but you know if they're someone who's like a corporate executive who's got five minutes a day to go on uh, Facebook then you want short sharp concise posts but if you've got a mum who's at home and she's wanting help she's wanting support with her parenting or something like that then you can put a longer post in there for that I think the key is to test and measure and see what posts are getting the response so see what um, is getting engagement with your clients or your potential clients on in the Facebook groups and also if you can put a graphic with it that will even amplify the effect that it's going to have and it doesn't need to be it can be just a photo it can be something with a question on it it can be a very simple graphic it doesn't have to be too dramatic and I do most of my graphics in Canva if that's something that you're keen to do and that Canva is free so it's www.canva.com or I use a great uh, app on my phone which is word swag and that it's a paid app I'm not sure how much it is maybe it's three or four dollars something like that but that's brilliant and it gives you lots of different fonts and they look very professional very fast because I'm not good at graphics otherwise so that's there's some great reasons I think to join other groups and ways that you can showcase your expertise there but the key to really creating your own community is going to be to create your own group and that's something that I have done I think it was November last year I decided I wanted to create my own group and therefore I could I can create uh, a group of people who a community of people that I want to spend time with who are potentially my ideal clients who are interested and wanting my expertise so are interested in creating systems and getting organized and growing their business and learning about marketing and getting support uh, get uh, attracting cust uh, clients uh, creating automation you know all that sort of stuff that's the sort of thing that I am expert in and that's what I'm offering to the group and that's what I want people to come for and then of course the group gets its own its own um, culture as it grows you can guide it a certain way I, I get to choose who comes into the group so I can say if somebody doesn't look like someone I want to spend time with then I don't have to let them into the group if they apply so if you're running your own group you have control over that 
you get to then dictate or not dictate but you get to set the rules so if you want to have a no no promotion day no promotion group then you can create that if you want to have themes in your group then you get to decide that if you want to uh, allow people to do videos you can decide that if you don't want to all those sorts of things are your decision as when you create your own group so you have a lot of power and the fantastic thing about your group is that you have a ready-made audience there so when the time comes for you to start or if or I mean you may be there straight away but if you if you create a program if you are looking to get clients if you are wanting to uh, look for joint ventures so if you're looking for people to run a workshop with or to create a, uh, a summit a video summit or something like that then you've got a ready-made audience or tribe or community or whatever you want to call it sitting there who are already used to you who listen to you who see you all the time who read your great content and who are therefore going to see you as an expert they're going to want to uh, hang out with you you're not going to have to start from scratch like when you go into another group someone else's group you have to build up that know like and trust factor so that people are going to have to get to know you first before they're willing to uh, hand over their email details or they're willing to you know sign up for a call with you or they're willing to pay you money and invest in one of your programs or products so I would really recommend you starting your own group but before you do that you want to go back to basics like I said at the start and know who your ideal client is there's no point you jumping in and starting a group in uh, let's see I often use the <laughs> use a photographer as an example so let's say you're a photographer and at the minute you're thinking oh I think weddings I might do weddings so you start a group of uh, brides and people who are interested perhaps in your services and then you suddenly change to doing branding for example and all of a sudden this group of brides who's here who haven't got their own businesses and who don't need branding headshots they're not your ideal client anymore so although you've got a wonderful huge tribe it's not necessarily the right tribe for you because you've moved on and you've changed your uh, area of the area that you're concentrating with your business so and the thing as well is I'll just say too is that you don't want to be too general there's no point in you going ah oh, I think I'm interested in photography so I'll just create a group for photographers or people who are interested in photography because that's too general so if you're for example say you're a bride looking for a photographer you're not going to go join a group who's interested in photography you're going to look for someone who's interest who does wedding photography if you are someone else who is looking for something very specific and you've created a group that's very general then they're not going to join because they are not going to feel that they they it's appealing to them they might go ah oh, photographers yeah I want a photographer but I really want a wedding photographer I want someone who's an expert in wedding photography so and that's yes 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 Leanne yes that's right exactly and that's the thing with your coaching and I know if you're a coach there are so many generalist coaches who really are not able to charge the amount that they would like to because they haven't got a specific niche that people are going to be willing to pay for so if you're a GP obviously this we we'll use this example because I've used this countless times before if you've got and I'm an optometrist so let's use that too so say say I've got a sore eye and I think oh I'll go to the GP and see if he can fix it and he says uh, that'll be X amount of dollars yes um, yeah that looks okay I'll hear it try all these drops and see if one of these will work and then you go away and you've tried the drops for a week and they're still it's still not getting any better so you think hang on 
He's, he just specializes in the whole body. I've just got the eye problem. I think I need to see an eye specialist. I need to see an ophthalmologist. So then you go and see an ophthalmologist. And he can decide, have you got uh, bacterial conjunctivitis? Have you got a fungal infection? Have you got a, a, a viral problem? Or have you got something more serious? And he can really narrow in and say, well, okay, the, all these general drops are not working. You need to have this specific one and use it for X amount of times a day for X amount of days and then come back and see me and I'll charge you again and you will pay him a lot more money but he's going to fix your problem so you haven't had to dilly dally around and think oh, you know have a general solution that might have fixed it you know maybe for some people it might have fixed their eyes but for most of them um, they had to then take that next step to the specialist and that you're willing to pay a specialist for their expertise okay there we go so thanks Leanne for that so when you create a group uh, like I said you decide on the purpose of the group you decide on the rules obviously you're not going to be a dictator and say these are the rules and I'm not listening to what anybody else says in this group <laughs> if you're going to be a very um, a popular uh, as well as a uh, an expert uh, coordinator of the group then you're going to listen to what people say and if they're all busy saying we really want theme days please give us theme days and you're saying no theme days are not happening in my group then it may be worth you at least discussing it so being open to what people in the group want is a really good idea but the thing is you have instant credibility you've created a group you make the rules you choose the way that you want the group to run so that's um, a real I really recommend it now something else people have been asking me as well is how do you grow your group and this is something that's really really um, important obviously because you want to have and now you don't necessarily you don't necessarily have to uh, no we don't need theme days Davika you don't have to have theme days in a group uh, that's your choice a lot of groups don't have them I find for me uh, people were asking about theme days and it then encourages people to post each day I suppose rather than just go in and randomly come up with some something it gives them a direction with their post and it allows also I know for me is I can plan ahead so I might plan tips you know I might have a whole page that I've done of tips and then I can grab one each week if I want to uh, so that's an option if you want that's exactly right Leanne it does provide structure so growing your group now when I grew my group when I created my group I uh, created the group description and I was quite clear on what was happening in my group what culture I wanted what the group was uh, what the purpose of the group was which was to be supporting uh, female entrepreneurs in business and uh, giving them an outlet to be able to get more structure and get organization with their group so the first thing that I did after I had created the group was to send messages personal messages to my friends my, my obviously my real friends but my Facebook friends as well <coughs> and that worked really really well I sent a message uh, saying you know I've started a new group this is what it's called if you uh, this is what it's for uh, these are the people who are going to benefit from this group now no pressure I thought you're uh, because you're in business and you're really cool that this may be something you'd like to join no pressure at all uh, thanks so much uh, and I look forward to seeing you if you'd like to be in the group something like that I wrote a really cool one and I sent it out to all of the people who are on my friend list who were no sorry I take that back to all the people on my friend list who were female first who were uh, in business and who I thought would be a good fit for the group now a word of warning here too is that Facebook has a fit if you send out too many personal messages in one day so uh, I'm not sure what the limit is once I get to about well, maybe 20 or 30 I find that they start asking me questions and filling in those capture uh, forms to make sure that I'm a real person so I would stop then because you may be blocked um, for sending personal messages for a couple of days afterwards 
So each day I would send messages. And because it was just such a really nice, non-confrontational, very personal, friendly message, a lot of people uh, applied to join my group. And that's how I got it to probably about 90 people within a week. And that worked really, really well. So that's the first thing that you could do. Uh, my list, I sent out a, an email to, or a couple of emails probably to my database telling them that I joined, that I created a new group and offering them the opportunity to join if they so desired. So that worked really well. Uh, I went, what else did I do? Oh, when I was in my other groups on offer day or on promotion day, I would offer people to join my group on networking day. I was able to suggest my group to people to join up and that worked really well as well. Uh, I know something else that I did as well with my uh, coach, I was uh, in a pro coaching program and I won a competition and she featured me to her list which is a huge list of about oh, 16,000 people and I made sure that she put my, uh, my group in there and I got a lot of people joining up from from that email that she had sent out. So if you're able to get promoted by someone who has a large group, then always, or a large database, sorry, a large list, then always put in uh, your group if you want, if that's the intention that you want, you want people to join your group. I'm not sure about that, Leanne. I don't know about that one, sorry. Uh, so, the other options, I know that it's been, I've, I've been, I've listened to other people who have said things like when you comment, like if you get comments on your comments in a group, on your posts, sorry, send people a personal message and offer them to join your group. This is an iffy one. I would really only do this if I'm, not persistent, consistently getting one or two people who are commenting regularly on my posts and they're always commenting then I may send them a personal message and say hey I've got this uh, fantastic group that um, does XYZ if you're interested no pressure but I'd love to to offer you um, to join and I have had people join up from that but I wouldn't be some people recommend you know sending a personal message to everyone who comments on your post I would not recommend that I really wouldn't uh, because it's going to be seen as spammy and some of the group regulations will not allow that and you don't want to be you don't want to be seen as spammy you don't want to be um, black banned from any groups as well so those work really well and another one that I've heard uh, people have done which I haven't done myself is to look for groups uh, that may contain your ideal client and look at the list of members there and send personal messages to them. And that's something I haven't done. I don't know, I think that's a little bit pushy for me. So I wouldn't really do that. But another thing that you can do is to ask people in your group to recommend your group to other people, to other groups. And that works, it's not other people, other groups. So to their friends, you know, I'd love you to promote this group. If you're enjoying your time in our group, I'd love you to promote it and you know, help us build our community with more beautiful women who are going to be able to support each other. So that works really well. Uh, so asking, asking for referrals. And that's the thing. So many people don't ask for things. They may want, they're hoping someone might do it. But if you actually ask, people are often happy to do that. They're often happy to say, yeah, sure. I'm happy to um, recommend the group to some, some of my friends. But they may not have thought of it themselves. So the key is to be able to actually ask. And you're not, you're not doing anything terrible. You're not asking them for money. You're not asking, asking them to sell your children to them. It's just something very, a very soft uh, ask from people. So I definitely recommend you do that. And you could do that in your, to your database as well. When you're sending out emails, say, you know, do you, would you like to join my group? Or do you know anyone else who is an online female entrepreneur who's looking for support with her systems and organization? Uh, she may like to check out our group as well. So, yeah, and once you've got your group, 
that's where you know once you've got the group and you're the trusted expert then you give as much as possible you give them free content you give them video they you give them you as much as possible um, so that they can really start to get to know you and they're getting the benefits of what they joined the group for give them lots of opportunities as well to connect I know that I have put uh, short on the left hand side I'm not sure what you mean by that left hand side oh you mean down the sorry I'm just looking at Devika's comment here so when you're saying the bit on the side you mean because you can't see it um, that doesn't really matter though because people when they join the, that's only the groups that you've joined are on the left hand side of your Facebook page I think that's what you're talking about Devika but at the start it's going to be on the top when people actually are going to join your group they're going to see the whole thing um, so I know for example the heart-centered soul-driven entrepreneurs and I work in personal development these are long names of groups I find a short name is going to be catchier and more effective as long as you can convey what you want in that short name okay I hope that's answered your question Devika so you want to nurture your group you want to be giving them giving them free stuff all the time giving them your expertise giving them you on video giving them a chance to interact with you and I was going to say something else I've forgotten now giving a chance to interact with you and giving them uh, free content now the other thing in order to obviously you want to have a great Facebook group because that's your community but you also want to build your list or your database too so when people are on your email list then I mean this sounds a bit mean they're yours <laughs> they're yours you can get in their inbox you can send them an email directly that doesn't mean they're going to read it but you have the option to be able to do that on Facebook you don't own that list Facebook owns that list so it's really good if you can get people connect with them in multiple ways too so that you've got even for example people who are in my Facebook group um, who also get my newsletters are going to be doubly more likely to uh, know and like and trust me faster because they're getting me from different angles okay so they're getting different views of what I do they're getting different um, uh, understand different aspects of expertise so it's really good if you are able to get people onto your database as well as having them in the group and that's why I've for example this lunchtime live stream lunch getting people to opt in for it is great it also allows people you can do spontaneous Facebook lives of course but by planning ahead you're therefore setting an expectation so people are going to start building up excitement about what you're offering and interest in it and then you have the opportunity to have them on your newsletter on your email lists you can send out regular newsletters to them and nurture them that way too uh, so live content events uh, I suppose I would define as a live event like this or a webinar or uh, a zoom or something like that where you are having people opt in for it so you're actually and it's and they're actually giving you their name and email address so this is something that's really going to help build your credibility and your visibility and for you to be able to make offers offers like I said those call to actions which don't necessarily have to be paid things but some sort of an offer is going to be much more powerful when you make it after they've just spent an hour with you on on a Facebook live or they've just listened to you uh, for an hour on a webinar rather than you just putting a post out there so live content events are really great and obviously if you've got your own Facebook group you can use that to run your live Facebook event live content events and to market them as well in there too so now are there any questions at the minute because I was going to uh, oh, I've just seen how long I've been going for I've got my fast face my fast Facebook strategy formula I was going to share with you which is just a seven uh, step formula so would you like me to share that with you or have you <laughs> are we all done for today because if there's any questions please let me know uh, but 
actually this will be pretty quick so I might just go through it anyway quickly so when um, you're on Facebook it's very easy to get sucked into that Facebook uh, rabbit hole and never come out again <laughs> or when you do come out you realize that it's actually been an hour rather than 10 minutes that you were planning to be on there so there I've got a seven seven step system uh, great thanks Leanne uh, so the first thing will be when you go on Facebook is to set your intention so why what what are you planning to do what do you want do you want to um, put out a sales offer are you looking to connect with people are you looking to provoke uh, conversation and engagement so decide on that your intention then <laughs> number two write out a plan and your priorities okay so what are you going to do okay I'm going to do a post in uh, the focus female entrepreneur I'm going to put another post in these other two groups that I've got and then I'm going to go and spend five minutes commenting in this group so that people start to see me regularly in there then now this is all before you actually get click on um, Facebook then create your posts so that they're all ready to go and your graphics like I said I like to use Canva and Word Swag so that you've got all your uh, face your posts there you might have two or three posts and you've got the graphics that you're going to put with them if you're going to use graphics and this is again all before you actually get onto Facebook next you're going to put on your timer now I like to do a 15 minute timer and at the end of those 15 minutes the main thing is the timer goes off and wakes you up <laughs> from your Facebook uh, not stupor but whatever it is that you do in Facebook and that allows you to go oh it's been 15 minutes okay I'm off now because I only want to be on here for 15 minutes or okay it's been 15 minutes I've just got a little bit more to do I'm gonna set it for another five minutes and then I'm definitely off the main thing is it breaks your trance and makes you make a decision on what you want to do next then then you go on Facebook so you've set your timer for 15 minutes then you go on Facebook when the timer goes off you reassess what you're doing sorry you go obviously go through what we said so then you're going to post your posts in the different groups you're going to put your graphics up there you're going to do your five minutes commenting whatever you had planned to do that day and then at the end you get off Facebook and that's it so the real key is to uh, decide on everything that you want to do before you actually click on Facebook and then have the timer to uh, infiltrate your brain fog that's um, keeping you on Facebook indefinitely and making it impossible for you to get off okay so <laughs> that is probably all I've got my notes I've been through all the things that I've got on my notes here now is there anything that I haven't answered I'm just remembering that's right because I did have two questions I had a question from Kitty uh, um, about tips to grow the group and I think I've answered that and there was another question from Leanne which again was to to grow the group and oh that's right and you said uh, you were wondering about how to transition followers from your page as well and I think that probably the the main way to do that Leanne is to make to regularly post about your group in your page and to tell them about how you know oh I'm just going to do a Facebook live on my on, on my group um, if you want to do if you want to read more about this then join the group and just continually promoting the group and just little comments here and there about so and so in the group said this the other day and uh, if you join my group you can get my free lead magnet as on joining I think just being as as uh, proactive as possible when when you're in your on your page at, at transitioning and talking more and more about the group and then deciding when you are actually promoting your services or your business on line deciding on do you want to promote your page or do you want to promote your group and decide on the reasons that you're doing that and choose one or the other at a time so uh, thanks Leanne uh, what system are you using now Devika what do you mean um, as in what am I doing to get people from my page onto my group if that's 
what you mean in Devika, then uh, probably those things that I just said where I'll talk about a live content event I'm having on my group. So this one, for example, that's another thing as well. This uh, live stream lunch, yes, you had to opt in to uh, join it, but if you're in my group, I mean, you can stumble across it easily and you don't have to sign in to actually listen to me talking now. But if you're in another group and I have promoted this and people have signed up for it, if they want to hear me, then they're going to have to join my group because this is where this is where it's happening. <laughs> so they had to um, to opt into my group to do that. So I hope that answers your question, Devika. Thank you so much, ladies, for being so engaged and asking so many questions. I know I didn't get to all of Leanne's because she <laughs> she had some fantastic comments there. Thank you for that. All of you are really, really uh, okay. There we are. Is this your mobile or on? Oh, now okay. I'm on my phone, Davika. I'm doing this on my phone, which is perfect uh, because it's I've got it on a little tripod, which means I don't have to hold it, and um, it's much clearer, I think, than my uh, computer. So thank you so much for being so attentive and engaging and interactive with me, ladies. I really look forward to seeing you in the group. Oh, and I was going to talk to you about my upcoming... Oh, I've forgotten where it is now. I've got a, uh, a webinar coming up on the 3rd of May, all about content marketing and being able to uh, create content that's going to grab the attention of your ideal client and make them, uh, compel them to want to work with you. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll post the link here below a bit later uh, and you can sign up for the, the webinar. This is a webinar and it's on the 3rd of May at... 9:30 a.m. I think so. It's Wednesday, the 3rd of May. So I really look forward to all of you, seeing all of you there. Uh, and any questions, if you're watching this later, please pop them in below, and I'll come back and answer them later. Lovely to spend this time with you on our live stream lunch, and I'll see you next time, ladies. Bye bye.